Hi again, everybody. Um, I had good response from the last video I did about uh, comparing audio and video quality from different devices, so I thought I'd continue the theme. Um, if you didn't watch it, let me summarize. Um, get an okay camera. Uh, your video quality is probably fine. Get a light. That'll help more than a better camera. And get the do get a good microphone. Um, if you can, I think the good microphone is worth it. I think if you watched that previous video, you heard it. Um, if you can, uh, do a two-screen setup. Uh, I'll show you why in a minute, but I very much like having two screens in front of me. <clears throat> so um, setting up Open Broadcaster software, uh, I'm recording with it now, so I kind of couldn't do the, the setup from scratch because I'm using it. Um, but what I did is um, do the setup in a Windows Virtual Machine from scratch. Let's have a look. Um, so I recorded this screencast a few minutes ago, downloaded OBS, installed it, accepted the defaults, um, <clears throat> when it runs, you get the option to do this uh, setup wizard, which I did. I'm going to mostly be um, recording ahead of time, not streaming. So I, I selected those optimizations. Um, you know, I think 30 frames per second is probably good for a, a lecture. We're not doing fast motion. And I think there's something wrong with this virtual machine. It, it does seem to be slow. It picks us really uh, low resolution for my video because that's all it can sort of process in this situation, but it, it'll do uh, for the demo at least. <clears throat> so once you've set up OBS, um, you can start adding some sources um, such as an audio input capture. So this is like a microphone. So I can say I want this audio source. I'm going to name it microphone. Um, in this virtual machine, I only have a little webcam. So I'll take the microphone from that webcam. And you can see in this audio mixer, um, the microphone's there, also the desktop audio if your computer's making noise, and the default system microphone. I'm going to mute both of those just so I'm in control and using my own microphone. And then um, a video capture device. This is something like a webcam. So again, I have a, a little webcam connected into this virtual machine. Um, it's really slow. I, I don't know what was going on when I did it. <clears throat> but add the webcam and it'll appear in the screen. Um, so this window that's mostly black is the preview of what's being recorded. Um, take that webcam, make it full screen, and that pretty much catches us up to what I'm doing in my actual computer here. So <clears throat> again, this I'm, I'm doing this in Linux. It looks almost exactly the same in front of me. You'll see it when I start showing the screen. Um, in fact, one thing I did realize was I didn't I didn't turn on the screen capture in that video and I can't show you the screen capture until I turn it on. So I'm just going to do that. Um, OK, so this is my screen. It's what I'm looking at right now. Um, let me just um, I know it's, it's just visually weird to see that pre that video in the video. So I'm going to do that. I think that's OK. Um, all I just did was add a screen capture and I selected I, I said yes so now we're looking at my screen we have uh, well I had another video source that was the video uh, that I just captured uh, in Windows um, I'm just gonna get that out of the way and I have my webcam that's now behind it's behind the screen so I can move it up on top mm, that's not where I want it um, so I can do something um, can I so it's hard to show everything at once here. Okay, um, I'm going to um, just reset this so it's at the default spot up in the corner. There we go. Um, and now I can move myself wherever I want to be. Um, you know, probably for a lecture, I mostly want this kind of configuration. Um, mostly the computer screen out here, and a little bit of me down here in the corner, um, which I guess, as you see, it must be sort of down in this part of the screen. Um, and well, that's the basics, right? So that's, I've got my sources there. I've got the basic layout. Um, now if I kind of draw the focus over here to this scene, um, this layout that is the screen is here. I'm down in the corner. You can hear me on the microphone is called a scene. And so this one is something like, I don't know, it's, it's mostly the screen, right? So I would usually have something like, um, a web browser with my slides on it or PowerPoint with slides on it or something like that. I want students to be able to see me, but not mostly the screen. 
Um, and usually when I'm doing that, I would take this window uh, and I would drag it over to my other monitor. So I would have this on the screen and I would have the OBS window kind of over here out of the view of the students, uh, but I can still keep an eye on it, right? I can still see over there that, you know, what the layout is. I can check the audio level and this little monitor if I want. Um, which again, I think having a second screen is super handy for this, even if it's, you know, old, low resolution, bad color or whatever. Um, but in these scenes, um, this is where things get kind of interesting. So, you know, there might be a point where um, this little image of myself is covering something. Um, so I'm going to duplicate that scene, uh, call it screen only, and just turn off the webcam. So now I can switch between these, these two things and I get either this view or this view of the world. Um, or maybe I'm... Um, Maybe I'm making a point. I, I want a little bit of my slides, but I'm um, I want more of me. Uh, somehow, I think the thing I'm saying right now is more important, and I want that much of the screen to be taken up with me. Uh, and I can switch between those layouts depending what um, that, you know how I want to um, kind of move the student's attention. Or maybe. Um, you know, if you are just sort of having a talk, um, maybe you don't want the screen there. Um, you know, so you could completely turn off the screen capture. Um, wait, I can't, I have to show it to you uh, this way. Um, in the webcam, you can then go to the transform um, and do this. See, I'm, I'm in the wrong spot. Pardon me. Um, go to the webcam uh, and set the transform fit to screen so it takes up the whole screen, um, turn off the screen capture behind it, and then I have this other view that is um, just me and the camera. And I can now, you know, at a click, have this window in the other screen and flip between these as I need to. You know, I've given them reasonable names. I can kind of quickly look over um, you know what, maybe I want to reorder them. I'm going to reorder them in like increasing amounts of me on the screen. There, I think I could very quickly um, deal with this now. Um, and at this point, I mean, I could have other stuff, right? I mean, I have a web camera and a screen and a microphone, but if I wanted to, um, you know, I've had people say, well, what about my whiteboard? I miss a whiteboard from my classroom. Um, well, I have you know, I have a second little webcam here. It's a cheap little um, Logitech webcam, you know, what costs 30 or $40. Um, I'm going to add it. So let's see, I'm going to duplicate, I don't know, it probably doesn't matter. Um, um, I'm going to create a new scene <clears throat> and I'm going to add that as kind of my own personal document camera. So it's a new video capture device. Uh, I'm going to optimistically call it document camera and select uh, this one. Yeah, there we go. Um, so now you're seeing this. So I'll add that source to this scene. Um, let's see, I don't need the screen capture. Uh, I'll make that document camera I'll do transform, make it full fit to the screen. Put myself on top. Um, so now, again, if I could take this camera, um, you know, somehow mount it on, you know, on a bookshelf or something, uh, point it in the right direction, maybe point it at your actual whiteboard if you have one somewhere that's appropriate, maybe just point it down at a piece of paper, um, whatever. But then you have the situation where you can you know, do the demo, write something, whatever it is you need to do. Um, maybe what you need to do is um, <clears throat> have a second camera that's pointing out at your room. I don't know what you teach. Um, if you want to stand up from the computer, do a little dance, whatever it is. Um, yeah, I mean, if you have a second camera, create a scene for it and off you go. And one, you know, you're one click away from getting there. Um, this is a case where, by the way, uh, I will point out again, something like um, 
Droid Cam for Android or Epic Cam for iOS. Um, let you let you take a phone and make it work like a webcam, or make it you know fool your operating system into being a webcam. And uh, well, again, you have a couple old phones in a drawer. You have a couple webcams. Um, other setup in here that I want to point out um, for the audio setup, and I've done this in other videos too, but the filters for audio, and I did cheat a little bit here and have these ahead of time. Uh, I'm going to turn them off. Actually, let's get rid of both of these. Okay, so this is the bare audio coming from my Yeti microphone. It's a good microphone to start with but there should be a little bit of noise. And that background noise, it's funny, you can't hear it until it's gone. And as soon as I turn on noise suppression, suppression it's gone. And the other thing I had done there, um, I find this microphone a little quiet. So I had turned myself up a few decibels um, somewhere there. Um, so that's what I had done before. <clears throat> um, a compressor, um, it takes the higher end of the audio and sort of doesn't let it be as loud. Um, so it, it keeps those really loud pops from being quite as loud, I think. Um, if, if there's an engineer listening, um, send me an email or something uh, if I'm wrong. Um, the other thing I've done in my own setup is I turned on a noise gate. Um, <clears throat> so a noise gate is basically, if you if you kind of look at the sound meter here, if you're in a situation where, okay, maybe you don't have noise, but if there's a quiet part in your lecture, but there's, you know, the kids are playing in the next room or something, there's going to be a little quiet sound kind of down in the negative 50 range. And the noise gate basically turns that off. So basically really quiet sounds get truncated down to zero. So again, if you're being quiet, but there's a little background noise, it'll chop that away. <clears throat> um, and at this point, I mean, it's really kind of fine tuning. Um, <clears throat> the other settings I've done uh, for myself, um, you can set hotkeys for each scene. So I've used just like kind of control one, two, three, four, just so I can grab a key to get it. Um, let's see what I probably want the order of like, again, like some order of like increasing me. Um, <clears throat> I think that's right. So now I can hit control one, two, three, and four for those scenes. Yeah, I like that. Um, and I did say in another video, one thing I, I wanted to point out here again, if you're live streaming, right? If you're gonna stream this video to YouTube or Twitch using OBS, um, keep an eye on the, the bit rate because you're reliant on your SHA or, or TELUS home internet. They don't have good up, upload speeds. So you might have to fiddle with the, maybe the video size, maybe the uh, the video bit rate, uh, just to get something that will actually kind of fit over the, the connection you have. Um, do some experiments, I think. Um, speaking of webcams, um, if you do want to use uh, this OBS sort of setup for, um, uh, well, as a webcam, as um, a Zoom camera or a WebEx or, or whatever you're using, there are these things, um, OBS Virtual Cam for Windows, uh, OBS Video for Linux Sync for Linux. Um, they basically let you take the OBS output, pipe it back in as a webcam. So if you have one of these turned on, you will have a webcam on your computer that's basically the OBS output. So you have kind of all this director directorial control of your webcam. Um, plus then you don't have to worry about bandwidth because Zoom or whatever will kind of tweak the video settings so it, it'll deal with the local bandwidth, which is nice. So I hope that helps. Um, you know, we're all new at this. I think with, again, very little um, learning, I mean, how I've been at this for less than 15 minutes now, um, you know, a few tweaks, you know, you find some duct tape, you get the camera in the right spot, you get that second camera, you know, propped up against a book on the shelf so it points the right way, get a, yourself a decent microphone, and I think we can do pretty good here. Um, you know, getting decent audio, decent video 
isn't that hard, right? I mean, I, I'm not about to be a professional Twitch streamer or whatever, but that's fine. I don't want to be. I'm going to guess you don't either. Uh, you just want your lectures to be audible to the students and you want to present the right material. Um, and this gives you a way to do it. So good luck again. Open broadcaster software. I'm, I've been loving it. It's great. It's perfectly what I want. Um, there's more complexity that I'm not using, but that's fine. I just, I don't go to those windows. So good luck. Um, send me an email if you're around SFU and you kind of need some help on this or some guidance. Um, at least until the start of the semester, I probably have time to, to render some guidance. So good luck. Bye.